Professor Paul Wellings, CBE, Vice-Chancellor of the University, will present the candidate for the degree of Doctorate, Doctor of Letters, Honoris Causa. Chancellor, I present Cathy Lett for the degree of Doctor of Letters Honoris Causa. Will Cathy Lett please stand? <laughs> Chancellor, on behalf of Council, I present Catherine Marie Lett. When Cathy Lett left school at the tender age of 16, few would have envisaged her exceptional contribution as a best-selling author, entertainer, and health and social justice advocate. Though her quick wit, verve, and unapologetic refusal to quietly accept the status quo was certainly already at play. Cathy was raised in the Sydney southern suburbs fondly known as the Shire. A surfy girl growing up in the 1970s cultural epoch of sexism, she was propelled into feminist thinking by the teachings of Germaine Greer. She and childhood friend Gabrielle Kerry formed the cabaret duo, duo the Salami Sisters, singing their observations on raw slices of life and making the pages of the Sydney Morning Herald in 1978, protesting buskers' rights not to be moved on. The pair went on to write a controversial column for the Sun Herald. One year after she dropped out of high school to become a writer, Cathy co-authored Puberty Blues, an autobiographical, autobiographical proto-feminist teen novel about two 13-year-old southern suburbs girls seeking to boost their social status by ingratiating themselves with a male surfer gang. Insightful and explicit, the novel gener generated a generation of, of issues for a whole generation and became an Australian cult classic. It was made into a major feature film in 1981 and an award-winning award television miniseries in 2012. Cathy spent her early adult years as a newspaper columnist and a sitcom writer in Australia and America before penning her next novel, Girls' Night Out, in 1998, relocating to London that same year. She has since written numerous international bestsellers, some of which have been translated into film and stage productions. Her novels have been published in 17 languages and 120 countries, and she is an undisputed queen of the chiclet realm. Cathy also held the prestigious post of London Savoy Writer in Residence in 2004, where a cocktail named after her can still be ordered, <laughs> the Cathy Cassis. As a writer, she's employed humor and refreshing candor to shine a light on serious issues, to challenge social norms, and to empower her readers. Cathy's 2014 novel, Courting Trouble, used comedy to talk about sexual violence and the court system's mistreatment of rape victims. She's variously put under the microscope issues of sexism, inequality, marital infidelity, body image, menopause, and the joy and isolation of motherhood. Cathy drew on her deep well of personal experience in writing her 2012 novel, The Boy Who Fell to Earth, a funny, quirky, and tender story of a single mother raising a child with Asperger's syndrome. Cathy's son, Julius, now 25, was diagnosed with the condition at the age of three, and writing the novel served as a way of coping, accepting, and overcoming the challenges and wonders of raising an autistic child. The story is currently being made into a Hollywood feature film. 
In recent years, Kathy has been vocal in raising awareness of autism spectrum disorder, ASD. She advocates helping autistic people become their own best selves and celebrating what makes each individual extraordinary rather than forcing them to fit a social definition of normal. She is an ambassador for Britain's National Autistic Society and for Bioautism, Bio Australia's only charity dedicated specifically to raising awareness and funding for ASD research, and regularly uses media appearances to eliminate stigma, stigma and bring awareness and understanding to new heights. Kathy champions a range of charities for women, children, and community health more broadly. She's an ambassador for, UK, for Plan UK, Women and Children First, and the White Ribbon Alliance, and counts helping women achieve pay equality as a key priority. She has campaigned for the Anti-Cancer Council of Victoria, and in 2014, spoke at the Wollongong Community Cancer Links Literary Luncheon. Though she took full British citizenship in 2011, Cathy maintains very strong connections with the Australia's mediascape through television appearances, radio, and writing opinion pieces for newspapers and magazines. On a more personal note, for almost 30 years, she has returned to the Illawarra to celebrate family Christmas, relishing the reunion with her beloved mum, her strongest guide and mentor, and her three wonderful sisters, who she cites as the greatest gift imaginable. Chancellor, Cathy Lett's contribution to society as a prodigious writer, tenacious social commentator, and health and well-being advocate is exemplary. It is a privilege and a pleasure to present Cathy Lett for a Doctor of Letters honoris causa. In the name of the Council and by my authority as Chancellor, it is with absolute pleasure that I admit you as a Doctor of Letters Honoris Causa of the University of Wollongong. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, Cathy Lett, who was just admitted, just admitted as an honorary doctorate, is our guest speaker this morning. Please join me in welcoming her. Thank you, Paul. That was such a lovely speech. We just want to marry you now. Um, Chancellor, members of the university, graduates, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, this really is the most thrilling honour for me because, as you heard, I did leave school at 16. The only examination I've ever passed is my cervical smear test. Um, I'm an autodidact. It means self-taught. Clearly, it's a word I taught myself. Um, and my poor mum of school principal was horrified when I abandoned formal education to write my first novel, Puberty Blues as you heard, about growing up as a surfy girl in Cronulla. So, Mum, I'm making it up to you today, OK? Uh, but the campus already feels like home to me because my lovely niece, Maddie, and my scintillating nephew, Harry, are students here, and with my very clever Cassie, Riley, and Charlie soon to follow, and my three wonderful, wise, and witty sisters who did go to university here too. So. Um, it's incredibly exciting for this ex-surfy girl to finally be surfing my brain waves, like you lot. 
The other reason I'm so delighted to receive an honorary doctorate from the University of Wollongong is because, I, as you heard, I am a Shire girl. And I think about a third of the students here um, are from the Shire. Although when I'm living in England, whenever I tell people I'm from the Shire, they think I'm some kind of hobbit. You know, it's <laughs> quite hard to explain. But the South Coast is my stomping ground. I mean, every school holiday, my family would snake down the Bull Eye Pass, you know, in our overladen Chevy to my grandma's house in Jeringong. And my sisters and I would explode from the car like champagne from a shaken bottle, squealing with delight as we raced for that beautiful beach. I grew up prawning in Lake Illawarra with my many cousins. My sister Cara lives in Berry. I learned to horse ride at Shoalhaven Heads, and it was at South Beach that I successfully body surfed for the first time, which would have been a total triumph if only my bikini bottoms hadn't caught a different wave altogether. Um, but anyway, with the honour of an honorary doctorate from this prestigious university, I can now go for gold in the gloating Olympics. In fact, when the university rang me to find out my um, head measurement for the hat, I was like, well, it was much smaller before you asked me that question. <laughs> but I'm actually going to weld it to my cranium. I'm going to, I'm going to get a waterproof one so I can wear it in the shower and when I'm, you know, boogie boarding. But to all the graduates here today, your academic achievement is so much richer than mine as you actually, actually work so hard for the accolades. So I was thinking, what possible advice can I give you as you embark on your dazzling and dynamic careers? And I think firstly, I would advise you to follow your instincts because as graduates, you're all official brainiacs. We know that. You're like Wikipedia with a pulse. Um, and while the head is clearly important, it, please don't forget your heart either. I mean, my instinct to follow my creative urges, although initially precarious, has led to a fascinating and really rewarding literary life. And although for all the writers in the room, I must confess that I only really write because it's cheaper than therapy. <laughs> so hence my top tip to all you budding authors is to write what you know. And actually, Puberty Blues was penned as revenge on all the surfy boys I grew up with because these guys disproved the theory of evolution. They were evolving into apes. <laughs> they were the sort of guys they thought sex drive meant doing it in the car. Um, although I think I finally worked out why that is. You know the little sign on the rear vision mirror that says, objects in this mirror may appear larger than they are? And I'm like, right, got it. Yeah, we're on to you boys, we're on to you. <laughs> but you know, the massive success of that tiny tome, you know, since then, I've been comically kneecapping misogynists in all 14 of my novels and will continue to do so until women do get equal pay. I mean, it's over 100 years since Emily Pankhurst tied herself to the railings and Australian women are still only getting 75 cents in the dollar. We're still getting concussion hitting our head on the glass ceiling and we're supposed to clean it while we're up there. So, you know, any woman who calls herself a post-feminist has kept her wonder bra and burnt her brains because we still have a long way to go. And so to the female graduates today, I would say, lean in. Don't be shy about your talents. Be loud and proud and bold and brilliant. And let every man you meet know that you no longer want his seat on the bus. You want his seat on the board, okay? Um, <laughs> yeah. Mm. And to all our splendid male graduates, I mean, this inspirational university has equipped you with all the key assets required for success, initiative, confidence, drive, determination, practicality, and positivity. The world is your oyster, so go out there and devour it, but do share the feast with the female colleagues you meet along the way. And I would suggest to each and every one of you graduating today, stay true to yourself. Because when I first moved to London 28 years ago, I mean, the English was so condescending to me, especially the literary establishment. I mean, many of them have been at Oxford for so long, they've got ivy growing up the backs of their legs. <laughs> and what they graduated in is advanced condescension. You know, especially when they hear the Australian accents, you know, the noses go straight up in the air. I've looked up so many noses in my life living over there. And what's worse is that they don't, they didn't, well, they don't speak English. They speak euphemism. You need those little United Nations headphones to decode them. So when they used to say, oh, you Australian, so refreshing, I thought they really, really liked me. No. What that means is, rack off, you loudmouth colonial nymphomaniac. And I'd be like, how dare they call me a loudmouth? Please, you know, I have my standards. <laughs> But I refused to be cowed, and I just carried on being myself. And in the end, it, it paid off. I mean, for example, last year, one of my friends was going to the Royal Polo and said, would I like to come? 
So as a writer, you're always in Margaret Mead mode, like an anthropologist on L-plate. So I said, yes. And when Clarence House saw I was going to the polo, they rang me up and said, look, would you like to present the cups to the princes? So I said, sure. So I'm at the polo, and I can see the princes standing there. And I said to the organiser, he was one of those guys who sends his shirts out to be stuffed, you know. I said to him, what do I do? And he said, well, you just present them with the, the cup and, and then kiss them on the cheek. So I could see Prince William walking towards me, and he looked really bored. So I thought... I might as well liven it up a bit. <laughs> so as he walked up to me, I said, apparently, I have to kiss you. Do you want tongue? <laughs> and Prince William went, oh, perhaps later. <laughs> and then he went back to the, the others and went, I could see them all laughing. And Prince Harry came up and I said, do you want tongue? And he's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, he picked me up. I rode him around the paddock. You know, it was great. <laughs> and... They were so relieved not to be treated like porcelain princes. And they didn't send me to the tower, you know. In fact, you know, my invitations to Buckingham Palace, you know, keep rolling in despite my rampant republicanism. <laughs> so my last top tip to you is, is to please remember that optimism is not an eye disease. I mean, the world needs the energy and optimism of young graduates more than ever. I mean, in these volatile times, it's imperative to demonstrate not just social awareness, but active social engagement. I have no doubt that you're all going on to do big and brilliant things, and I'm sure that the University of Wollongong, with its philanthropic programs and in inclusive philosophy, and I was amazed that you've got 179 nationalities on this campus. It's like a human minestrone. Um, but I'm sure that's all instilled in you a set of values that have humanity at their heart. So be successful, but never forget others. Be critical when necessary, but temper criticism with great grace and wit and empathy. Seek to help others in need of opportunities and support, you know, from which you have all benefited. I mean, the University of Wollongong has invested heavily in your future, teaching you to communicate across borders, whether they be social, national, gender or ethnic, to make a better future. So looking out at today's graduates, I urge you to, yes, seek fame and fortune, but also never forget to think of others and to care enough about your community and the world at large to engage and to add your voice. So hearty congratulations to all the graduates on your triumph today and also congratulations to the parents who supported you financially, emotionally and psychologically. I know we parents can drive you kids mad, but we also drive you everywhere. <laughs> Never forget that. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's true. <laughs> And so to the new graduates and the family and friends who've shown such loving support and to my own dear family down there, um, I doff my cap to you. But now I'm never taking it off again. Yes! <laughs> <laughs>